In the following tutorial, we will learn how to do an assembly. So you, you have created all the different parts, which should appear here across the bottom of your screen in the various tabs. And then if you notice, you always have a blank tab, which is created right at the beginning called assembly. Okay. So on here, you're going to insert each of these parts into this screen and assemble them together. So you're going to end up with hopefully something like this. So to do that, obviously go into the assembly tab. It's blank. You go to insert. And you'll see all the other parts you've created in this document. So we shall start by entering two cuboids. Click once, click on again, and you bring in two. That's all we want for now. I could, I suppose, bring in this long part. That'll be the next bit. Don't bring in more than three parts at a time. It can just become a bit of a visual problem at times when you're trying to move things. You've got too many parts on the screen. Uh, this is a pretty easy one to make because you've got all these holes. It's quite easy in the software when you have holes which are aligning or matching each other. Okay. So obviously I want this surface to meet this surface perfectly. So to do that, I'm going to use a fastened mate. There's two mates which you will use, or three mates I would say, which you will use more than likely. Fastened mate, the revolute mate when you want a part to turn round another part, or to revolve round another part. So for example, here. Okay, this has a revolute mate here at this point, but all the others are fastened mates or perhaps a planar mate. Okay, but if you've got holes everywhere, it's pretty straightforward at the beginning. So let's do a fastened mate. I'm going to roll in so I'm going to show you what I'm doing. So that's selected the inside of that hole, and you can see I can move this disc to different positions in that hole. I want it to match and line up on the other side here with this one. So I need that, that little pointer, this little disc that appears, to be on the outside here. So click once, turn it around. So this is where the roller ball on the mouse is really useful. Make sure it's on the same place, not back here somewhere. You want it to be in the same place here. Click, and you'll see it moves them together. That's pretty easy. Accept that. Now, with the same tool still opened here, you haven't shut this down, I can match up, say here, and here. So, so they also will then simply move on to each other and attach. Accept that. Let's just check. It's all moving. When I click on one object, all three move together because they've now been constrained together. Uh, we'll now insert the other part. So let's say the cube and the triangle. So again, easy because these holes align with each other. As long as you've drawn them properly and put them in the right place, all these holes should perfectly align with each other. So again, this is a fastened mate. None of these parts are moving around each other. So again, yep, that's in the right place. Click on that. And over here, click on that. You see it appears sometimes like this. It goes in the wrong way. It doesn't understand that you want it the other way. So all you have to do, you've got two options here. You've got angles are reoriented reorient, secondary axis, or flip it. So I want to flip it. But I also sit in the wrong way. It has to go that way. So I want to use the angle here, this revolve, reorient, secondary axis. Click on it. And it will turn around 90 degrees every time. Accept it. Roll back and do the same for this part. Again, make sure this disc is in the right place on the right position. Yeah. Needs to be flipped. 
and that's it. So that's the main body assembled. Uh, we want to now insert the red parts. So let's do two of them. Let's drop it back, click again, and accept it. So this one, we want this. This is actually the moving part. So here, this part revolves around this part. It has a constraint applied here, but instead of it being the fastened mate, it's the next tool across, which is the revolute mate. So it can revolve around that point. So click on this tool. I'm going to just do it on this side. And then here. Again, it's flipped. What you can do here, obviously in reality, there'll probably be a slight distance between this object and this object. So you can click on offset and you can enter a value and you'll see it moves it. Uh, why it moved that, I do not know. Let's just command Z that, Let's come out of that. Hmm. Okay, Let's do it again. And that one. Flip it and let's just leave it for now. But you should be able to offset that so it moves this object away from that object a certain distance, like one mil clearance between that part and that part. So try it again. Yeah, did it that time. It was moved it actually further into the object, so obviously it needs to be minus one. You can see there's a slight gap. Okay. I'm not going to bother. I want it to be zero. So accept that. I could actually, it's obviously sitting in the wrong position, so I'm just going to evolve it. I accept that. I'm going to do the same over here with the Revolute still on. And let's turn it around so it's in the same place as the other red part. And that's it. So I should be able to, if I come out of this, I should press escape. If you see this, just press escape or click out of it. Left click and just drag. Ah, yeah. Okay, so I'm trying to move this red part so it revolves around here. But at the moment, it's just moving it all. So what you need to do is select the first part, this first cuboid here. This is all the parts joining together. Right click on this and fix it. Right. Now if I try to move it, yep, yeah, it moves. Okay. So to make them both move together, you obviously have to join it together. So there's a block that sits in between. Yep, yeah, it's a cube and this triangle. So let's do it again. So in the insert. The cube and the triangle and accept it. So let's just make sure they both move. Yeah. So what I need to do is make a revolute mate. Because I want this part to be able to evolve slightly around this part as well when it's moving. Make sure it's in the right place. Want that on the inside there. That's right. Accept that. And then need to make sure this side is aligned with this as well. So let's select that. And then that one. A bit hard to see. And it moves into the right place. So it's not perfectly aligned. So accept that. And let's just finish it off by. Actually, we don't want this to revolute around that point, so I'm going to come out of this tool. Let me just check it's working. So if I left click and drag on that, yep, it's perfect. So you can see this part is now revolving around here and here. 
So let's go back to use a fastened mate to attach this. Flip it and accept. So you're now getting the idea of how to use these various tools, mainly the fastened mate and the revolute mate you need for the subject because it has these holes. Okay, when it has holes, it's very easy to line things up. If there's no holes, it is a bit more complicated. I might produce another tutorial to show you how to use the planer mate. All right, let's carry on now. Uh, adding the wheel, I'll do one for you. Or first of all, we'll add the the old triangles. I won't complete this for you. You can complete it because it should be pretty straightforward now. Um, let's uh, use the this one revolves this yellow piece at the back. Turns as well. Yep. So again, let's use the revolute mate. So if it turns, it's a revolute mate. If it doesn't turn. It's the fastened mate. So let's click on that. Let's just put it over here. Let's just check it. It's not quite in the right place. So flip it. That's right. I should need another one on the other side. Round loop mate. Click there, click there, revolve it, so yeah, sometimes the problem is not aligned, but we can fix that later. So as well, that should now move, and this should, oh, yep, this should move like that. So insert the cylinder, we need two cylinders. And they don't need to revolve actually, so that could just be a fastened mint. Flip it. Again, you want those two to be aligned as well. Just zoom in here and see that's not aligned. So you need. So let's just accept this, accept the first one over here. So accept that. Then do it again. So selecting this edge of this yellow piece, then moving over to the cylinder so it aligns up. Accept that. Not quite sure why that came apart. That shouldn't have come apart. Let's come out of that. Something not quite right there. So I'm gonna go back, command Z, command Z. So this was correct. Remember at any point you can just command Z it, undo, even here, you've got the undo button up here, go back. Let's just try that again. Maybe this time we'll just use the revolute mate, it doesn't really matter. So let's do that. Do that. Flip it. That's right. So accept that. And then see in here. Accept that. And they should hopefully now move together. Yep. Let's finish it off. And that's it. The wheel is pretty much exactly the same. We'll just do one and then I'll finish off and show you how to change the color and a few other things. So let's just do one wheel. So insert, first of all, tar. I'm oh, sorry, uh, actually that's the wrong name. That should be inner wheel. Let's bring that in and uh, must have named these wrong somehow. I haven't changed the names except that. So again, these need to revolve, so use the revolute mate again. Sh 
should be okay there, I think. So that needs to be flipped. And accept it. And I should be able to yeah, spin that around that point. And then you want to put the tar on the other side of that. For that, but you don't want the tar to be spinning and this to be spinning. So let's just come out of the revolute mate. Let's just check that still. Yeah. And use the fastened mate. So we want to use that reference point to be the outside of that. And that is it. So now when I pull on the tar, yeah, it moves the whole wheel. That's it. You can carry on and finish adding the other parts to finish the assembly. So you have all the parts. I'm missing the wheel here as well. It's disappeared somewhere. Okay. Um, little things you might like to use at some point is things like if you choose the part, let's see what I can do. Um, let's just choose the red part. Where's the name of the red part? Yeah. Okay, let's right click on that. Um, you can do this, you can go edit in context, which is quite a useful tool. And it basically shows you the part in context of the other parts, so it can be very useful when you're wanting to edit this part, add something else to that um, in relation to the other parts. Not so useful here, but just to show you how it works. If I go around to this, if I now sketch onto this work plane, and let's make another hole or something, for example, let's just make a hole here. So I've decided that I need another hole here, going between these two parts for some reason. Uh, I can then measure that distance from here and so on. I can get it in context of the other parts. Yeah, so it's very useful. I accept that sketch. And then if I like that, okay, I want to remove it. Oh, of course, yeah. I'm going to make the hole in this part because this is a different part. Accept it. You've now got a new hole in that part. If I go back here, go to the assembly, it's appeared on both parts because that is the same part. Okay. So if you edit one part, it will edit the other part, which is identical because you basically added the same part in twice. Okay. Again, that can be a very, very useful tool. In other tutorials, you'll see more use of that tool to be able to edit in context. Obviously, I have now a color and so on to the first few parts. So you could right click, go to edit in context, and just do little things like that. Select that part, edit the appearance, what do we say, brown color, and then go back. And you see it's updated instantly. All right. So finish off the assembly, add in the rest of the wheels, and then you're done. Obviously, before I finish, you can modify this, you can change it. The whole idea is you learn the software rather than just copy the video. So now I try to make your own adjustments, change the wheels, bring in new wheels, change the shapes of the parts. Yeah. Get used to experimenting with the software and try to create your own designs. All right. Well done.